Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Genealogical Society of Santa Cruz County's lecture series for February 7th, 2023. This is Introduction to the Family History Guide with guest speaker, Bob Taylor. To join this event using a telephone only, dial any one of the following numbers and I'll read one of them aloud. 1-888-788-0099. Zero, zero, nine, nine, and then slowly enter the webinar ID of 8716-705-1252. And we're taking questions as usual. If you're joining by computer, you'll use the Q&A icon to type your questions on the Zoom control bar. Generally near the bottom of your screen, you'll see the Q&A icon. And then if you're on a mobile device, the Q&A icon likely appears near the top right corner of your screen, and sometimes it's in a little box. So go ahead, click there, and then you'll type your question. And I'm going to hand things over to Gail Burke, Program Coordinator. Gail, over to you. Thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon. We are glad to see all of you here for today's program. This program is presented in partnership with the Santa Cruz Public Libraries on the library's Zoom meetings platform. We thank our library partners, Sarah Jones, Victor Willis, and Jessica Goodman for their assistance in supporting our programs. In a moment, we will get to today's program. First though, we have a few announcements. The, society, the Society's DNA Special Interest Group met earlier today, and we will meet again on Tuesday, March 7th at 10 a.m. The DNA SIG meets in person in the upstairs meeting room at the downtown library. Look for reminder notices about the time and place of the next DNA session. All the handouts from the DNA Special Interest Group can be accessed on the Genealogical Society webpage under the category Lecture Recordings and Handouts. The Society's Irish Special Interest Group is resuming for the first time since the pandemic. Sean Conley will chair the next Irish SIG session on Tuesday, March 21 at 10 a.m. at the Abbey Coffee Lounge, which is located at 350 Mission Street, Santa Cruz. Sean will lead a discussion of researchers' Irish brick walls and provide some basics of how to do Irish genealogy. Just a reminder, the upstairs meeting room in the library is reserved for the Genealogical Society for all of our Tuesday meetings, including Zoom meetings. The Society displays the Zoom presentations on the large monitor and Society members are available after the program to answer any questions that attendees may have. It's a fun way to participate in the Zoom programs in person. For details, contact Mike Epperson or join us at 1 p.m in the downtown library meeting room. As an enticement to join us in person, we are now offering cookies. If you have not yet signed up to be a volunteer staffer, please join us. We staff the genealogy room at the downtown library Monday through Sunday. Each shift is only two and one half hours long, and it's an opportunity to become more familiar with our reference collection. Our staffing roster will be complete if each of you will help by staffing just one day a month. Please volunteer to staff by emailing the society at staff at scgensoc.org. And um, I believe that uh, email address will be in the chat. We are always eager to receive articles of genealogical interest for our newsletter. Although the January, February, March issue was unavoidably delayed as a result of the January storms, the current issue is due out any minute. The next quarterly issue will be the April, May, June issue Please send articles about your genealogical endeavors, successes, and research tips to our editor, Lisa Robinson. We also hope to feature your genealogical brick walls in upcoming newsletters, so let us know where you're stymied. We have some interesting programs coming up. In March, Dr. Tracy Bliss will present her program on Evergreen Cemetery, Reversing Cherished Myths, which will incorporate information about the varied pioneers who settled here. Her presentation will include a short documentary film about the restoration of Evergreen Cemetery, a film that received the Spirit of Action Award from the Santa Cruz Film Festival. Our April program will feature Kathy Andrews, Senior Adult, Adult Services Librarian with the Salinas Public Library, who will present a program from her genealogical, Genealogy Basics series about ancestral occupations. Today, we are privileged to have 
as our speaker, Bob Taylor, creator of the free online website, The Family History Guide. Mr. Taylor will introduce us to The Family History Guide and will explain the features of the guide and demonstrate how it can make our genealogy research more efficient and more enjoyable. Bob earned a BA degree from Brigham Young University and an MS degree from California State University, Los Angeles, both in music education. He has worked in technical writing and instructional design for Intel and Western Digital, as well as teaching management courses in several Western states. He is active in numerous genealogical groups and has presented programs to many genealogy societies, as well as being a presenter at Root Tech, Roots Tech. And he's going to be at Roots Tech this year, coming up early next month. There is a handout for this presentation. Please join me now in giving Bob Taylor a warm Zoom welcome. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, I hope that you can see the home screen here for the Family History Guide website. The address is thefhguide.com. And this is a free site. There are no subscriptions required, no um, logins uh, paid. There's not even any advertising on the site. So uh, it's a pretty simple experience. And we did that intentionally because we want to have an easy entry for people to learn about doing family history and genealogy and not be worried about the cost. So our mission statement here, if I scroll down just a little bit here, is to greatly increase the number of people actively involved in family history worldwide to make everyone's family history journey easier, more efficient, and more enjoyable. I call that the three E's, easier, efficient, and enjoyable. Okay, so you can um, get pretty much anywhere you need to get to in the Family History Guide website by using this series of menus across the top here. Notice what happens when I move my cursor over them. You get these drop down menus that happen, and you can use those to navigate pretty much anywhere you need to um, within the Family History Guide website. So sometimes people ask, is there an app for the Family History Guide? And the answer to that is no. Um, and I'll show you briefly how that works. So if I narrow my browser window here, at a certain point, you'll see the menus disappear across the top. We have that three line item there. And then you have the menus happening over here on the left side. This approximates what you would see on a tablet if you're looking at the Family History Guide. And if you squeeze it all the way into the end, um, this looks more like what you would see on a phone. So I'm going to pull it all the way back. And the, the program, the Family History Guide platform, automatically rec recognizes which type of device you're using, and it formats the screens accordingly so you don't have to worry about that. All right, um, here on the home page, I'd like to demonstrate a few features. First, in the upper left, we have Select Language. So I'm going to click that button. And basically, you can get a list of whatever languages uh, Google Translate supports. So I could click Spanish, for example, and get the Family History Guide translated into Spanish. Um, whatever language you want to work, where, work with there, this is helpful if you've got people who, are, uh, who don't have English as their primary language. And I'm going to switch back to English here. OK, also we have this blue magnifying glass in the upper left here. I'm going to get rid of this Google Translate bar. The blue magnifying glass is a search feature um, that does a search only within the Family History Guide website. This does not go out to the basic internet around us. It just searches inside the Family History Guide. So I'm going to click that. And for example, if I were interested in information about adoption records, I could click that and I get a list of results. I could click one of the results and I immediately go to a place in the Family History Guide that has resources about that particular topic. So very handy to use. If you're ever wondering how to find a particular topic or item in the Family History Guide, using that blue magnifying glass is a good way to do that. And here we have it up in the upper right here. So you may wonder, OK, I'm off in a page that I'm not familiar with. How do I get back to the home screen? It's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is click the logo 
in the upper left corner of the screen and that takes you back to the home page from wherever you are at. Okay, today's tip. Monday through Friday, we have a feature called today's tip and you can click it and it this one for today talks about how to find and determine relationships in US Census records. And if you want to see a list of all the tips we have at the very bottom, you can click that and it opens up a page and there are literally hundreds of tips going back uh, several years there. So you can explore those wherever you like. And that opens up in a separate window that you can close back up. Okay, that's today's tip. All right, um, let's explore just a couple of items. Over here on the left, we have the intro menu. Um, we'll talk about get started in a minute. Actually, let's talk about that now. There's two ways to get there. One is from this menu here, the intro menu. And another is this big bold type link that says click here to get started. So we'll try that. Okay, the get started page. Um, we recognize that people have different preferences and interests in genealogy. So not everyone wants to accomplish the same things or wants to get started the same way. So we have a section here called first steps. And this basically helps you learn about the family history guide. We also have a beginner's path with fewer options. So it's a little more easy to get your arms around it. And we have a section on how to gather memories and documents and so forth as you're starting out on your family history journey. We also have a complete learning section. You can learn pretty much anything you need to know about family search, ancestry, my heritage, or find my past right here in the family history guide for free. We have an introductory section on learning how to research the research basics and how to explore different country pages to get international research going if that's what you're interested in. There's also a section on activities and other things. And we'll show these in detail a little bit later on in the presentation. A couple of things to show in the intro menu here on the left. We have an FAQ page. So you can click here and you can get just a uh, a quick summary of bullet points, frequently asked questions and answers. So that's some place that you may want to explore there. Next thing let's take a look at is something we call the learning system. So it's about halfway down the intro menu here. The Family History Guide is built on a powerful but flexible learning system. So the idea is that you will have the structure that you need to go step by step and find what you need to find and learn what you need to learn. But you also have the flexibility of changing directions where you need to so that you don't have to sit and wade through things that you already know or are not interested in. This picture, if I scroll down a bit, kind of encapsulates um, what the learning system is about. It's a series of projects goals and choices and we see here some boxes and you could think of them as boxes of information projects are big boxes goals medium-sized boxes inside those projects and the choices are the smaller boxes and inside choices we actually have links to articles videos websites and step-by-step -step instructions so the best way to see how this works is to actually try out a sample project so let's go up here in the upper menu and you notice we have we call these learning paths a learning path for family search for ancestry for my heritage and for find my past each with its own set of screenshots steps instructions and so forth. As a demo let's go here to family search project number one family tree I click that. And one of the first things you'll notice is across the top, you have these goals here. So these represent the medium sized boxes of information. We happen to be in goal number one, navigate family tree, but there are other goals here, alternate views like fan charts, um, how do you add sources, deal with record hints, so forth. Okay, I'm scrolling down just a little bit here and you see the choices are listed it's choice a sign into family search move around the family tree screen and you have step-by-step -step instructions and screenshots of how to do that there are also links to articles so what do you do if you've uh, lost your name or password username you can click a link there and you get step-by-step -step instructions 
Um, so you can go the route of using the step-by-step -step instructions uh, printed out here in the Family History Guide, or you can use additionally the references that are linked in there. So it provides you some flexibility there as well. Okay, at the beginning of each choice is a summary. If I click the summary link, I get a few bullet points that explain what we're going to be dealing with in that particular choice. And at the end of a choice, we have exercises. When I click that link, then there's a good level. So if you're good at this particular choice, you can do what it says there. If you're proficient, you can do what it says there. So that gives you a way to review what you're learning and to try out um, different things that will help you progress. OK, and then we have choice B and so forth. But what if you wanted to see all of the choices in this particular goal without having to scroll all the way down to the bottom? You can do that pretty simply over here in the top area in the goal area is a button called close choices. So watch what happens when I click that button. Now you see just the titles for the choices in the goal. And I could click any one I was interested in and immediately the information pops back there. You see that again. Uh, or the button now says open choices. So if I click the open choices button, which used to say close choices, now it opens up all the text again. So you can close or open choices as you like to uh, control how much information you're seeing on the screen there. OK, that's basically how the structure works for the learning system. You've got a project here. We're in project number one. There's also a project two, three, four, five, six. All the projects are listed in these learning um, paths there. Then once inside a project, your goals are across the top. And you can switch goals to get down into the nitty gritty of the choices, which have links to the articles, videos, websites, um, and so forth, and the step by step instructions. All right. Um, one other thing I'd like to point out here sometimes people ask us if there is a printed version of the Family History Guide. And the answer to that is no, there's not, because A, it would be very huge, and B, the content changes often enough that would be really hard to keep up a printed version. We do have to keep the Family History Guide up to date when um, platforms uh, make their changes and screens and so forth. We need to keep up with that. Also, genealogy is an ever-changing landscape, so there's lots of new things happening. And so we are continually adding, moving around um, articles and resources and so forth. But you can selectively print what you need to print. So up in the header area here in the goals, there is a print friendly button. So when I click that, it takes a few seconds. And then you see this goal one that we were in. And this is a much better layout for printing um, what you might be interested in. The graphics are compressed and things are laid out easier for print. But what if you didn't want any graphics? You could click on a graphic and it disappears. For that matter, you could click on any item that has a trash can here, and you could one by one just start removing items. Um, so you can print pretty much easily what you need to print. If you've made a mistake and you've hidden something that you didn't mean to, you can go back up here to the undo button and just keep clicking it until everything returns back the way you want it to be. You can scale, um, use different print options, print to PDF or print to paper this way. So those are some things that you can do with the print button. And that's in the header um, pretty much for every um, page that we have in the Family History Guide. All right, so we won't take the time to go through all the different goals in Family Search, but suffice it to say that we have um, different projects for Ancestry, my heritage and find my past as well. For example, if I went to project two ancestry, family tree, and navigate your tree goal one, now you'll see that the screenshots are all oriented towards ancestry instead of family search. And you have the step-by-step -step instructions for ancestry. So you can learn that. Um, and then there's things that are specific to dealing with documents, stories, and photos in ancestry as well. All right, um, we're going to skip down to project number four, Discover. And this one has a counterpart 
in ancestry is called research and research and research for my heritage and find my past. All right, project number four has the basics of learning how to do research. So we're in goal number one, get organized. I'm going to do a close choices on that. And we've got organize your materials, creating binders, digital files, and I'm closing and opening titles just for my convenience here. But this uh, choice C will help you learn how to use notes, research logs, software to stay organized. Uh, B is about to do lists um, and keeping track of correspondence, some good um, areas to be involved with there. Goal number two up at the top, learn the basics. So there's some basic concepts in genealogy research and we've boiled down some of the best uh, ones that we could find included them here for you. So this is one of the advantages of the family history guide. You don't have to go out and Google a bunch of alternatives or articles or, or you know, trying to find out what you should be doing and kind of reinventing the wheel. We've done the heavy lifting for you. We've assembled uh, industry leading resources, um, both articles and videos um, that you can check out here at the click of a finger. It's a just in time learning when you need it and where you need it. Goal three, form a strategy. We have an introductory video here of just a few minutes that talks about strategies um, and how you can form them and how you can use them practically. And then we have links to some uh, great genealogists such as a Amy Johnson Crow and her wander approach. Um, lots of great resources there as well. Okay, when we get over to goal number four here, you'll notice that there is an FS at the side of it. That means that this particular goal is specific to family search, as is number five, family search research tools has an FS, but the rest of the goals don't have that, so they're shared across all of the partners there. Let's take a brief look at number five, family search research tools. And I do a close choices, and you can see that this particular goal will help you use the genealogies option, um, sifting through genealogies that have been submitted, the Family Search Catalog, a huge resource for records that have not been completely indexed yet, um, free books, historical images, the Family Search Research Wiki, surname lists, and so forth. All right, we're going to hop over here to developing search skills. This likewise has an introductory video that you can watch. And this is about uh, improving your search techniques, using flexibility, um, specifying name variations, um, how to deal with Google uh, searches and Google operators. See, th these are some things that you can try to um, perfect and hone your search skills, regardless of the platform that you're working on. One of my favorites is the solve problems goal. So let's take a look at that, number seven. And we'll do a close choices here. How to avoid common mistakes in research. Oh, I love that one. Beginning pitfalls, common mistakes we might run into. Potential problems with terms and records. Is all that information guaranteed to be correct? The answer is no. So sometimes we have to do some due diligence and detective work to figure out where potential problems might be. How to use evidence to resolve conflicting information. Um, some records and some lines and some genealogies you'll run into have conflicting information. How do you deal with it? How do you sort it out? And how do you find the reliable pieces? Um, creative approaches to solve problems in non-typical ways, like thinking outside the box using photographs for your genealogy research, and what do you do when you hit the famous brick wall? Um, some great resources to help you determine when you actually have hit a brick wall and some possible solutions that you can use um, depending on locations, timing, uh, resources, and so forth. Okay, so that's um, project number four. It has its counterparts across all partners in the Learning Partner Series. Let's go back here and just below um, discover, and this is the same in all of the menus here, is a something we call the knowledge base. So let's check that out. 
The knowledge base is for general and United States research. We also have a knowledge base for international research, which I'll show you a little bit later on. So here, the idea is that you can find bite-sized pieces of information um, that you can refer to you know, whenever you need to. We were talking about brick walls. So up here in the top, I could click that topic and I get some nice bullet points along with some links to articles to learn more. Neighbors and relatives cluster research. If some of you have gone into some challenging research avenues, you'll find that doing cluster research can really yield some results for you. So this has some good tips there. And you can go, you know, whether it's census, surnames, schools, orphanages, whatever you're interested in, there are some great tidbits of information um, in the Family History Guide knowledge base there. Okay, one more thing to check out here, uh, surname ebooks. So surname ebooks on this uh, on the Family History Guide website, we have links to thousands and thousands of surname ebooks that are free. So for example, I could click this name Ainsworth and I come up with a surname ebook here. This is in the Internet Archive. And this is a free downloadable book about Ainsworth families in America. You can print, you can download, you can view whatever you want to do there. So there, like I mentioned before, there are thousands of free genealogy books on the internet. Internet Archive is a great source. Um, there's also Google Books. Family Search has a huge collection. Um, Hathitrust.org also has an incredibly large collection of free books. So those are worth checking out as well. We have some additional projects here. One that I'll mention is DNA. Now, you'll probably be aware that Family Search does not have a DNA kit, but there is some general information here about basic genetics, uh, ethnicity, uh, as well as some DNA research tools. But if you've taken an, a DNA test through Ancestry, for example, you could go to Ancestry and go down to the DNA project there. And then you find some specific things towards ancestry DNA testing. So I could learn about matching possibilities, how to connect with cousins, um, how to sift through all of that matching information that you may have received in your test results. Um, also, I mentioned research tools. So you've got links to some excellent articles and products. So I might mention that in the Family History Guide, we don't link to paid um things that you have to purchase for uh, for example if you clicked on an article link and it said hi to read this article you're going to need to pay us you know whatever or sign up for this we don't do that we just send you to free sites that you can access easily and you don't have to jump through those hoops as well all right so that's a quick tour through the learning paths family search ancestry my heritage and find my past Okay, let's hop over to activities and we'll cover this briefly here. The Family History Guide has over 200 family history activities um, for families, individuals, youth, and even kids ages 8 to 12. And the idea here is that this can be an inspiring place to get people interested in family history and genealogy. We all know that uh, family history and genealogy have amazing benefits for people. Um, studies have shown that youth who have an idea of where their ancestors lived and who they are and how they fit into their ancestral heritage have tend to have a greater self-esteem, have fewer problems in society, uh, more likely to grow up in stable families, that type of thing. So there are some great uh, benefits to getting other people involved in family history and activities can be a great way to do that. In the family, activity section here. I'll just scroll down a bit and you'll see a uh, family history fun basket. Here's some steps. Here's a video that explains how to do it. And one by one, you can scroll through these and find some really cool ideas for family history activities. Here are some topics up here that you could explore. Um, I also mentioned that there are some for individuals, youth, and kids. There's also an index to activities. So if you wanted to just browse through here and hmm, save memories on smartphones. That sounds interesting. And you immediately go to the activity so you can check it out. We also have a planning sheet. When you click that, you get a spreadsheet that opens up a Google sheet. 
and it's got a list of all of the activities and you can type in planning notes and notes for next time you can even rate the activities that type of thing so worth well worth checking out the activity section in the family history guide in media we have a blog that you can subscribe to and we have a couple of articles that come out um, each monday you can subscribe here you can even listen to the blogs if you're on the go uh, on your device, you can get it translated into different languages, whatever you like there. Also in the media menu, we have a Facebook page. And you can follow us on Facebook for some daily tips and interactions and so forth. We also have YouTube channel with over 200 videos on a wide variety of topics here and playlists and so forth. And we have Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram pages as well. All right, now it's time to hop over to countries. So a lot of what you're doing um, may involve doing research in particular countries. And the Family History Guide has an extensive collection of help for you in doing precisely that. So I'm gonna hover over the countries menu and if you go down a ways, you can click any one of these areas, such as North America, and you'll get some countries there or regions. I could click British Isles, same thing. And so if I click Ireland, then you would get the Ireland country page. And notice the goals are listed across the top. Research, archives and libraries, civil registration, et cetera, all the way through geography, culture, and history. And if I scroll down a bit here, here's an introductory video, and you've got your familiar choices um, with links to articles and videos and some databases as well, even some exercises. So that's uh, goal number one, and you can explore a lot about Irish research that way, and it opens up into a separate um, page that you can open or close. All right, there's another way besides uh, going through these uh, different regions, you can click the link that says all countries and here in all countries we get an alphabetical list so i could access ireland from here or i could go to denmark and open up that country page if i wanted to again the goals across the top um, for how to expand your research into denmark but what if going back to the all countries page what if the country you're interested in is not listed in this alphabetical list here then you go to this link on the left side that says more countries click that and you get a humongous list alphabetized of smaller countries and when i say smaller countries that means that there are not as many records or resources available in these places that there tend to be in the others that we we're showing you above so if i wanted to do some genealogy in aruba i could click that and here are some quick references and links and you can find plenty more um, places um, to check out in the more countries link. All right, um, let's follow the countries menu down a bit here. And again, pretty much any continent in the world and you can click and get uh, different choices there. Um, we also have an ethnic menu here. So if I click ethnic, then I see African-American, Asian, Basque, Hispanic, Jewish, and Native American. So since we're in Black History Month, let's try the African American research area. So the goals across the top are get started, how to find record sources, um, libraries, archives, and other sources, resources, slavery, how to deal with that, and how to break through different barriers. So lots to explore here. Um, I recently did a a project for the East Texas Genealogical Society, and they had me do a session on African American genealogy. And what I did basically was I selected pieces out of the family history guide and highlighted the interesting principles and vital things to know from there. And I was able very easily to put together a training class uh, of about 25 minutes on African American genealogy. And then I did a back to back with uh, Texas State genealogy very easy to do so if you're a trainer in or preparing classes in family history or genealogy the family history guide can be a wonderful friend for you there 
Okay, so back in the countries menu, all the way at the bottom, we have a country's knowledge base. Let's click that. Across the top here, we have abbreviations for different countries. So GER Germany, um, archives, cemeteries. You can learn pretty much what you need to about all these different countries um, using these little bullet points of information. So I would recommend this as a great tool to use, especially when you're getting into a country that may be new to you in terms of genealogy. You might not be familiar with the customs, the language, the geography, um, where the records might be located. So the knowledge base for a particular country um, can be especially helpful in finding what you need to find there. All right, we've been working in the country menu here. Let's go back and spend some time with United States research. So the United States page in the Family History Guide is the largest one because there is just a lot of information to cover there. Across the top in the goals area, you'll see we have this divided into sections. Section A, US records, miscellaneous. B is vital records. C, census. D, immigration. E, military. And F, other records. Rather than go through all of those, um, We'll just concentrate on a couple here. Uh, for example, um, let's do census records by decades. So this is C2. And when we click that, I can do a close choices up here in the top area. And we'll see that we have help for all of the different census years from 1950 all the way back to the first census in 1790. With links to articles, videos, examples, screens and so forth and above all of that you have links to census headings so what were in the headings in different census years and what census questions were asked here are some articles that will provide that information for you as well so this is a great way to drill into um, census research decade by decade uh, se uh, section e military by conflict Let's do a close choices there. And we can see we have all the different wars and conflicts as conflicts listed there for the United States. So if you wanted to dig into civil war research, here's an introductory video, and you have all of this information there as well. Okay, um, one other thing to show just quickly, I'm gonna go up to goal A1 records. And you've probably seen a couple of these. Uh, you have these little I info buttons here. So when you click the I info button for a video, it opens up the different sections of the video and you can go hop to a different spot in the video. So if I were interested in examining the image, I would open up that video and you go right there. So this helps you First of all, see kind of a table of contents of the video without having to open it necessarily. And then you can jump right into wherever you need to uh, go to within that um, particular video. So that can be very helpful as well. All right, if we go up a ways, just below the United States, the uh, Statue of Liberty picture here, we have a list, alphabetical list of states in the United States, plus Washington, DC and Puerto Rico. So let's click California for now. And here are the familiar goals across the top, research and records, vital census records, so forth. And you've got your links to articles and videos. So you may be wondering, what are these little lightning bolt icons here across the top? Um, the lightning bolts are a visual way to know that there are what we call quick links available. A quick link, takes you directly to a record collection search screen. So let's go here, here to goal number three, vital and census records. I'm gonna scroll down a bit and here we have choice B, explore California birth and adoption records. And here we have a series of quick links. FS stands for family search, AC stands for ancestry. So if I click this California birth index 1905, 
notice that I immediately go to the search screen. I didn't have to wend my way through a bunch of family search menus trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to find this collection? Once you've been reading about the information and you're ready to try it, we make searching just really fast and easy for you. Or I could go to California birth records from select counties, that record collection in Ancestry, open that up and ready to go. So one question you might have is, um, what about paid sites like Ancestry, MyHeritage, and Find My Past? Some of their record collections are free for everybody to use, and some of them are restricted. You have to have certain levels of paid or associate membership. Um, so some record collections may not be available to you at home. Um, some ways you can get around that, obviously you could pay for a subscription, but you can also visit a family search center or an affiliate library or society that has subscriptions that you can access those on site. Um, and that's a good deal as well. You can get that information for free. Okay, so that opens up Quick Links, but remember that Quick Links are not just for US states. We have them for all the countries around. So if I went back to British Isles, went to Ireland, <coughs> um, goal three, for example, and I scroll all the way down to the end, you see a huge list from Ancestry, Find My Past, Family Search, and so forth of records that you could search. And these record collections are 50,000 records and more. If we did all the record collections, the list would be way too long. So 50,000 records and more, they end up in these quick links. Okay, so back to the United States page. And one other thing I wanted to show um, concerning, oh, let's get back to California here. <clears throat> there is a link here that says CA counties. So let's click that link. That takes us to the bottom of the page. Here you have all the counties in California listed here. And you could click any one of them. The name of the county is in green. And that takes you to a family search information screen. A for ancestry, L for link pendium, and so forth. So we can go to Santa Clara County here, click the county name, and we have the family search page for Santa Clara County, California genealogy. Or we could click L for Linkpendium. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Linkpendium, but it's a terrific site. It has lots and lots of resources there. And we're scrolling, scrolling, and barely to the letter M here. So lots you can explore with Linkpendium. That's a free site. <coughs> so you have the options of using any of these different sources here um, for each uh, county in California, but also for any county in any state in the United States. All the state pages have these county links at the bottom with all of these different options, and each option has a slightly different flavor and direction and focus on what they're doing. So it gives you some great uh, resources to use there. Okay, let's move over here to the vault. <clears throat> And you probably have noticed that in the Family History Guide, there is hardly ever a case where you have more than two articles or videos in any one particular step. And we do that on purpose because we don't want to overload people with too many options and too much information right off the bat. But what if you wanted to really do a deep dive into a particular topic? There's more information out there. So that's what the vault is for. I'm going to click the main page here. And across the top, we have all sorts of categories there, um, stories. So I click stories and I get, oh, wow, all these videos about how to write a life story or biography or one for yourself or for your ancestor, um, articles, the art of storytelling, um, descendant research, all of these additional resources that you can spend time getting to know. So these are not the primary ones that we've put in the main part of the family history guide. These are more secondary, but still lots of interesting and useful things here. In each of these major categories, there is a main link. And when I click the main link, it takes me to the main part of the family history guide where it talks about that particular topic about stories and life sketches. And if I want to return back to the vault in the place where I was at, then I can click the vault link 
and I go back to where I was before with stories. Each uh, entry where available has a, for videos has a time, uh, the to total length of time for the video, when it was published, and we go from most recent down to earlier. And if it's not available, then we don't have a date listed there. So the vault can be a wonderful place. Um, English parish records, my goodness, lots of things. Um, English census that you can explore there in the vault. Okay, we're go, we'll go over here to the tracker. So we've talked about your learning progress. There's lots of things that you can learn and keep track of. How do you keep track of them online? Well, we have a tool. It's actually a secure database called the online tracker that helps you um, organize your learning progress. So I'm gonna click this and I'm going to, actually I'm going to use a different account with a little more information and see if I have the password right here. There we go. Okay, so this is the online project tracker. What you need to do first is, and I've kind of skipped by that too fast, I'll show that um, again as I log into the tracker. Okay, I'm going to have to log out probably. Well, anyway, uh, there is a uh, registration. So you can create uh, a username and password, and that's how you get in and get started with the online tracker. The online tracker is the only part of the Family History Guide where you have to have a username and password, and that's because it records information that you want to keep um, private. So all of the different projects are listed here. Project one family tree, for example, we were looking at that. So down the left, we have a list of all the goals and all the choices for this particular project. And here I've just kind of basically typed some notes. You can type, you know, whatever you want to um, as a way of recording what you remember or what you need to know about a particular choice or a thing that you're learning about um, in the family history guide. To the right here, we have slider bars for status. So I could move one of them. Zero means I have not started with this choice. One means I have started. Two means that I am at a good skill level with this choice. And three means that I'm at a proficient level with this choice. And the way that you tell whether you're good or proficient is if you remember back to where we were walking through the uh, projects, there was an exercises link. If you click the exercises link, there is an item listed for good and one for proficient. And then you simply have to do what it says there. And then you can move the slider bars here according to you know whatever skill level that you're at. <clears throat> so you can open up these for any uh, of the, the, uh, the projects in the family history guide. One other thing that I wanted to share here is this concept of stars. Okay, so I have logged into the Family History Guide with my account. Um, and I'm going to go back for just a minute to Family Search Project One. We were there before. And you'll notice that before each article or video link, there's a star. And once you're logged into the online tracker, you can click to darken those stars or remove the, the dark uh, coloring there. But the idea is that when you mark a star that way, it's a visual cue to you that you have read that particular article. So this gives you a way to see, oh, OK, I've covered this, I've covered this, and so forth. Um, very helpful. OK, back in the online tracker, what if you wanted a list of all of the articles and videos that you had read um, or visited on in the Family History Guide? You can use the stars feature here up in the header, and it will actually go across the, uh, the Family History Guide and create a list with the link and the date that it was ac or accessed last, um, goals and so forth. Now, this is just a sample list that I've created. I've obviously read more articles than these, but these are the ones that I put stars for, for demo purposes. So that can be very helpful to you to help, um, help you understand what you've covered and what you haven't covered in the Family History Guide. Okay, um, there 
are a lot of tools for trainers. We won't cover this in this particular um, demonstration, but if you do create family history training for someone else or for classes or groups or whatever, we have some wonderful, amazing ways that you can quickly and easily prepare classes and workshops and webinars and whatever you need to using the family history guide as your source content. Um, and these links here explain how to do that. Lastly, you can contact us in the miscellaneous menu, and you can send us an email here if you find um, that you'd like some extra help, or you have a suggestion for the website, or if you find a link that needs updating, let us know. Okay, that concludes our tour of the Family History Guide website. So I will turn the time back over to Sarah. And we can do a Q&A of anything that you'd like to discuss about the Family History Guide. Sure. So to our audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to use that Q&A icon down at the bottom of your Zoom control bar. He's happy to take questions. And it will take just a couple of minutes for people to get their questions going. While we're waiting, I might mention that uh, we're a nonprofit organization, the Family History Guide Association, um, and we're funded by private and public donations, tax deductible. I think there was one question in the chat. Maybe the person doesn't have access to the Q&A. It said Google translation cannot translate our family name Cheng, C-H-E-N-G, into the family last name, which I first learned how to read and write in Chinese, and change the spelling of Cheng to Zheng with Z-H-E-N-G in order to find a Chinese word which is not written the way I learned in kindergarten, result of Mao's cultural revolution simplified the traditional writings into his quote-unquote new way of doing things. It's always a challenge when the names uh, change spelling, that's for sure. Any yeah. comments there? <laughs> oh, that's that's a very good point. You know, for a while we wrestled with the fact of even using Google Translate, but over the past few years, it has been getting better and better to the point that it's reasonably accurate. Now, in the case that we've just mentioned here, there are some definite problems. One thing you can do though, is you can suggest um, corrections and improvements. Um, thousands of people are doing that all the time, recommending those changes to Google, and they'll incorporate those and see if they can uh, refine their algorithms and come up with better translations. So that's a, a tip that you can use. There is a couple of other questions. It says, when did your organization begin and why? Excellent question. Okay, so just a brief story. I was serving as a volunteer in one of the family search centers and in Utah, and I noticed that people would come in every week and kind of basically ask the same types of questions, which is okay, you know, we're there to help, but I thought there's got to be a more efficient way of helping people. And because I had a background in instructional design and web and that type of thing, technical writing, I decided to put a, a brief website together just to answer a few questions. And then it kind of snowballed and then Family Search found out about it and they um, actually have us linked in their portal that goes out to 5,000 family search centers around the world, and we're a, a trusted uh, a working partner with them. Um, so it has grown. We we are now now have visitors in over 150 uh, countries. But our mission basically is just to get more people involved and more deeply in family history around the world, um, so they can receive the enjoyment and satisfaction uh, um, that comes from doing that. Well, great. Thank you. And your next question says, can you only use this site from the public library? The answer, fortunately, is no, you can use it from anywhere. You can use it from your home. Um, it's absolutely free. And you can use it on a laptop, computer, tablet, phone, you know, whatever your device of choice is. Um, so yeah, we're happy to have you use it wherever and whenever you'd like. Sometimes people like to do split screen and have 
family search or ancestry in one half of the screen and the family history guide in another or if you have two monitors you can spread across that way and on a related note it says to clarify do you only need to create a password when accessing the vault no actually it's the online tracker that needs the password that's the only place in the family history guide where you do need a username and password other than that you don't need it um, and the online tracker is not required it's just a feature that helps you track your learning progress so anywhere else in the family history guide you're you're free to use uh, without a username or password great when you add a star near the end of your presentation does the star go into the worksheet you're creating go into the worksheet i'm not exactly sure what we might mean by worksheet the stars will show up as long as you are logged into the online tracker. If you log out, then the stars are blank and you have to log back in again, but it remembers all the stars that you've marked, so you never lose them. Um, for my presentation uh, to the Texas Connect, um, Texas and African-American genealogy, I used a, that star marking system. I basically went through and studied which elements I wanted to include in my training and mark the stars. It was very easy for me to find them when it was time to present. And I just opened the link that had the star by it and discussed what I had prepared and very simple to do. Your next question is asking if there's a template to create a family tree. Is there a template to create a family tree? Um, it depends on where you're doing it. I would recommend using the online platforms such as Ancestry. There's a free one in Family Search, also a free one in WikiTree. Um, that way, you don't have to create a template. If you're thinking about charts like pedigree charts and um, family group sheets and that type of thing, we have links to where you can find those. For example, um, in Family Search Project One Family Tree one of the goals is charts and forms so you could go through here and you could find all sorts of free charts um, that help you track your family um, but as far as entering the information online you'd probably want to use one of those services that we talked about thank you your next question says what are the plans for the ongoing life of the family history guide are there other people who will maintain the site that is the $64 question right there. Okay, so this is unofficial information. So don't go blaring this across the internet, but I'll share it with you, trusting that you'll keep it you know, under wraps. But to answer this question, um, we are in the process of putting together a content management system. So what that is, it's a portal that editors can access to make changes to the family history guide sort of like a wiki except that we are a much more attractive version of a wiki if you've probably seen you know wiki pages that don't you know maybe look all that great um, but we are going to be recruiting editors to work in that content management system so that basically means that it can be group sourced uh, because currently it's very small team sourced we use our team and we work them ragged <laughs> um, you know keeping the content up to date but our plan for the future is to open that up um, to a much wider um, range of contributors that can keep that moving forward for us hope that answers the question well and if it doesn't uh, just feel free to that, type in your question you again <laughs> All right, let's see. Next question says, can I use photos to make up the family tree? I'm not sure if that's connected to a different question. Um, yes, you can definitely, you should include photos in your family tree. It depends on what platform you're using. Family Search, um, Project 2 Memories has a whole section on photos, as does Ancestry, My Heritage, Find My Past. Each of them have their own approaches to adding photos but each of them allow and encourage you to add photos to your family tree that others can see if you so choose um, and it's a great way when i added um, photos to my uh, memory section in my family search account i had people coming out of the woodwork saying hey that's my aunt that's my great aunt do you have this photo and it became an instant sharing experience so it's a wonderful way to get in touch with other people who you may be related to uh, by sharing photographs online 
And let's see, then the next, I think the follow-up question says the photo is in the archives file. Not sure on that one. Um, I'm not sure which archives you're referring to. If if it's an online archive, you would want to make sure that you had permission to download the photo and share it. And then once you do, then yeah, great, great to do. And then people are looking for the URL again. It's, uh, so far as I know, it's HTTPS, uh, the T H E F H guide. .com. Yeah, I'm I'm one I'm uh, waving my cursor over the F H guide.com. And if that doesn't stick, you can always do uh, a Google search on the family history guide and then bookmark it. And then I'm not sure what's going on with the QA, but it should be working. Or you can continue to use the chat. It's a good thing the chat was open. Oh, it looks um you know, it's a little bit unclear. There's another comment about Charlotte Hall Museum in Arizona. I'm not sure if that's connected to that archives file question. Okay, so that's probably a good question, but I probably wouldn't have much information on that. But speaking of archives, each country and state page in the Family History Guide does have a, a whole goal area that talks about libraries and archives. So you may find some wonderful clues there about what are the relevant archives and libraries in particular areas, and you can contact them for um, information that you might be needing. And your next question says, when you don't see your county within the state, is there a feature to find other counties? If you don't see a county and it is an actual county, an existing county within the state, then send us a, an email because we need to get that um, added in. If it's a former county, um, then you'd need to find out the county that it got absorbed into and those and then work backwards in that particular county. And I posted the link into the chat for anyone who was looking for it. You have lots of thank yous. Thank you. I didn't know the site existed. I'll be doing lots of reading there. Can't wait to get started. Lots of awesome information. So be sure to check out the chat there. Excellent. That's kind of our paycheck, if you want to put it that way. Um, we love when we can help people discover their genealogy and family history. And we don't make money from this, really. We're just here to spread the good news. So that's what we do. Right. Well, this is the last call for questions. Now's your chance. So we can use the chat or the Q&A. And there will be, the, the session is being recorded and we'll post it on the library's YouTube channel in the coming days. And so more it, thank yous. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, so if you like the Family History Guide, then spread the news. Um, share it with friends, family, social media. Um, that's the biggest way that we gain traction is grassroots level. So if you like it, share it. If someone said this is going to be a whole new project in and of itself, exploring and learning. Appreciate the webinar. Can't wait. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you, Bob Gale. Bob, thank you for this fascinating view into all the possibilities at the Family History Guide. It will be useful for genealogists at all levels. And thank you to everyone who attended today's program. Please join us again on the first Tuesday of February, March 7, at 1 p.m. for Dr. Tracy Bliss's program on Evergreen Cemetery, Reversing Cherished Myths and her documentary film. This will also be a Zoom presentation. You can register to receive the Zoom link by way of the Santa Cruz Public Library's events calendar. And just a reminder, you can access the handout from today's program, as well as a handouts from earlier programs by visiting the Genealogy Society of Santa Cruz County website and clicking on lectures and handouts on the left-hand side. The website address is https colon forward slash slash scgensoc.org forward slash. And I believe the website was entered into the chat. When you visit the Genealogy Society website, you will also find the membership application form there. If you are not already a member of the Genealogical Society of Santa Cruz County, we cordially invite you to join our society. We look forward to welcoming new members.
And then uh, we're going to show you now how to register for our programs. To register for the program, all you need to do is enter your first and last name, your email address, and you can click on the small optional yes box, which allows the Genealogy Society of Santa Cruz County to send you more information about a variety of events you might be interested in attending. Once you click the blue register button, you will receive the Zoom information for the next program. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Gail, Sarah, Victor. Yep. Thank you, everyone. It. Have a nice afternoon, Bob. Thank you so much. It's a yeah, wonderful presentation. For a fabulous presentation, Bob. And I'm one of these people who's going to spend more time on the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I, I have uh, several uncles from Capitola, and I think that's oh, oh, in, well, your, then you in know. your neighborhood. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, the Capitola got slammed. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. And